In this video, we're going to discuss the column spaces of the matrices. What is this and why we need this? One of the essential concepts of the vector spaces, and especially the column spaces, is the linear combination of the vectors. So what we're given two vectors, e and b, a linear combination of these two vectors is when we multiply the u to some constant a and v to some constant b and we add them. So for example, if the u is given as this vector 1, 2, and the b vector is given as a vector 3 and 4, then a linear combination of these two vectors in general form can be written as a multiplied to this vector plus b multiplied to this vector. Especially so if I choose some values for the a and the b, some, some exact values, specific values for the a and b, I can obtain this combination as a vector. Or, for example, if the a is equal to the minus 1 and b is equal to the 2, the combination of these two vectors is going to be 5 and 7. So, in general form, a linear combination of the two vectors can be written like this. So, now, we, we call a span of the vectors and vectors as a set of all possible linear combinations of these vectors. Basically, mathematically, we can write it like this. So the span of these two vectors is a linear combination where I multiply the first vector to some constant, second vector to another constant, and n's vector to some constant, where I can choose this constant as any number, so for all possible values of the constants. For example, if i is given as 1 and 0, and j is given as 0 and 1, then the span of the i and j is the set of all possible this kind of combinations where I multiply the, some constant a to the i and some constant b to the j. So let's try to understand what is this actually. So actually by combining the i and j we can obtain any two-dimensional vector. So any two-dimensional vector with the components a and b can be obtained as a combination of the i and j. Right? For example, the vectors 3 and minus 3 can be obtained by the combination of the i and j where I multiply the i to the t and j to the minus 3 or this vector with the components minus 4 and 3 can be obtained as a combination of the i and j. So any vector in 2D can be obtained as a combination of the i and j. So that is why when we talk about the span of the i and j this is going to be the whole space of the two-dimensional vectors. So now let's consider another example. So let's say we are given these two vectors, 1, 2, 3, and 4. I would like to understand what is the span of these two vectors. So mathematically, the span of these two vectors is all possible, this kind of combinations, where I multiply the first vector to some constant a, the second vector to the other constant b, and I add them. So where I choose the a and b, all possible values. So this is going to give me the span of the u and b. So now let's try to draw this. So let's say I would like to draw the u, which is the vector 1 and 2, and a v, which is the vector 3 and 4, right? So the linear combination of these two vectors is obtained by creating the third vector, omega, which is going to be a multiplied to the u plus b multiplied to the v. So if I choose the a and b, like 1 and 2, this vector is going to be like this. So geometrically, if I would like to add this black vector to this blue vector, we need to create the parallelogram, right? Uh, so black vector multiplied to the t, sorry, plus a blue vector multiplied to the 1, so we need to create the parallelogram and we need to choose this diagonal. This is going to be the addition. So this, this omega vector is one of the combinations of the u and v, and this is obtained by multiplying the u to the t and v to the 1 and we're summing them. So I would like to know what I can obtain by combining these two, what kind of vectors we can obtain by combining these two vectors u and v. So in order to do this, let's play with the values of the a and b. So if I choose different values for the a and b, we can obtain different vectors. So by playing with the values of the a and b, we can see what kind of vectors we can obtain as a combination of these two vectors. And actually, we can obtain any vector in the space by combining these two vectors. So now let's consider another example. So the u, let's say, is given as a 1 and 2. v is given as a 3 and 6. So graphically, they look like this. So they are parallel vectors. So they both lie on the same line. So now let's again combine them. So a multiplied to the u plus b multiplied to the 
v is going to be again a vector on the same line as these two vectors. So if I multiply the u to the 1 and v to the 1, if I add them, uh, or to the 2, if I add them, I will obtain this vector. Now, what, what I would like to do is, I would like to just play with the numbers of the a and b. If we play with the numbers, we can see that, hey, the combination of these two vectors, u and b, is always going to be is always going to be on this line, along this line. So previously, in a previous example, the spin of these two vectors was the whole space of the two vectors in 2D. In this case, the spin of these two vectors is going to be all the vectors along this line. So basically, the spin of these two vectors is a line. So the column space of the matrix is the spin of its columns. So basically, if your matrix is given with the n columns, then the column space of the matrix A contains all possible linear combinations of its columns. So this is the definition of the column space. So it is, for example, let's consider an example. So if your matrix A is given like this, then the column space of this matrix is all possible linear combinations of these two columns which is going to be this, and we've considered previously that this is the whole space. So the column space of the A is the all possible linear combination, all possible vectors in 2D. So in this case, 1, 2, and 3, and 6, the column space of the A is going to be all possible linear combinations of these two vectors, which is just a line. So the, we need the column space in order to know about the solvability of this kind of system of linear equations or in order to deep understand the solvability of the systems more deeply. So let's say we're given a system of linear equations ax is equal to zp. I would like to understand before I will solve the system whether it is possible to solve this or not. So let me write down the matrix A like this and the vector x like this. Then A matrix has n columns, x vector has the n rows, then it is possible to multiply them. So now I would like to multiply this matrix A to the x as a combination of the columns of the matrix A. So where I multiply the first column to the first component of the x, second column of the A to the second component of the x, and so on, the nth column of the n, A to the nth component of this x. So basically, this matrix A multiplied to the x can be seen as a linear combination of the columns of this matrix A, right? And this would be equal to the b. So whenever we ask you, so hey, tell me, uh, tell me how to solve the system, ax is equal to the b, we're actually asking, tell me a specific linear combination of the vectors, of the, of the columns of the a, which is equal to the b, right? So solving the system of linear equations is actually finding a specific linear combination of the vectors. So let's say we're given a system of linear equations in this form, so a multiplied to the x should be equal to the 4 and 2, Solving the system means finding a specific linear combinations of these columns, right? So what I need to multiply to the first column and to the second column so that their sum is equal to the 4 and 2. So let's try to draw this vector 4 and 2 here. So this b vector is equal to the vector 4 and 2. Right? So this vector is here, not on the line. So we know that so I'm asking you, hey, how I need to combine this u and v so that the linear combination is equal to this b vector. Actually, it is impossible to do because this b vector is not along this line, right? So all possible linear combinations of these two vectors are along this line, and it is impossible to obtain this vector, which is out of this line, by combining this u and v, right? So the conclusion for the solvability of the system of Ax is equal to b is that this vector b should be in the column space of the A, right? So the column space of the A contains all possible combinations of the columns of the A, right? And finding this system of the equations is mean, uh, means finding a specific combination which is equal to the vector b. So if this vector b is not one of these combinations of the columns, then it is impossible to solve. 
So the system of the equations is solvable if and only if B vector is in the column space of the A matrix.